So today we are doing an ACL reconstruction with bone patellar tendon bone autograft uh, using the flexible reaming system and the fast thread biocomposite screw on both the femoral and tibial side. This is showcasing the benefits of using the flexible reamer system through an antral medial portal, again on the left knee. Okay, so at this point, what I'll use is any microfracture all, typically it's a 45 degree, will make your life a little easier. Uh, just to mark our position of the femoral socket. And usually with, we're going to drill a 10 millimeter tunnel today, uh, which we'd like at roughly a one to two millimeter back wall. So we're going to put this about seven, six to seven millimeters anterior. So I'll briefly mark that. It also helps in giving us a position to start our pin. Perfect. Okay, so once that's done, that's going to give us our starting hole, which facilitates passage of our wire. So one of the ways to facilitate this procedure and make it a little smoother and faster is to have the wire preloaded in the guide with the tip just barely sticking out so you're already loaded and ready to go. Once that's done, it can be introduced very easily through the antral medial portal and then the whole construct is loaded and ready to drill. So once that comes in, you already have your wire with your tunnel that's already pre-positioned. It holds the wire position in the appropriate spot so it doesn't skive. Once that's done, it can be advanced. Now, the position of the hand is important here. So the nice thing about this guide is it has an angle device, which is a vertical pin, which tells you where the wire is going to come out. I prefer mine at a 45-degree angle. You can also change your trajectory so you can make it more vertical or more horizontal, depending if you're doing a revision. You can actually deviate with a huge amount of flexibility with this system away from previous tunnels and produce a divergent tunnel technique in just about any degree of freedom. Again, a nice position and a nice facility with this device. Given this a primary ACL, we're going to do it at 45 degrees. Uh, with the knee in slight hyperflexion, I'm bringing my hand down against the tibia, and we can advance that wire now. This wire is extremely sharp, and in an ideal scenario, it will come out right midpoint of the iliotibial band, as you see here. And we'll take a shot of that lateral aspect of the knee in just a moment. So this is the optimal position of the wire. Again, you want a midpoint between the anterior and posterior tibia on the femoral side with this wire coming out exactly in the middle of the IT band, and that can be positioned and confirmed. If it does come out too posterior, it's very simple to change. You just drop your hand, rotate your hand slightly vertically, and it comes to the perfect position on the, four, again, 45-degree angle. So in this, you can see it coming around the femoral condyle. This is a risk of skiving and injuring the medial femoral condyle cartilage. And so for this reason, we have our tibial tunnel, which is now a position that allows us to bring a microfracture pick up through the tibial tunnel again, and we can hook that underneath the flexible wire. Now that flexible wire, because it is flexible, can now be deviated away from the medial femoral condyle. This is not allowed by any of the straight reaming systems. Again, you have to use other types of guides to get around, but this system allows us to deviate our reamer away from the condyle. With a microfracture pick or other retracting device through the tibial tunnel, this now protects the reamer from the medial femoral condyle. With that retractor, you, didn't, you don't need to worry too much about this, and you literally can screw it through the soft tissue, and it screws right past that microfracture pick and into the knee. With the microfracture pick there, you don't need to worry about the soft tissue or oscillating back and forth because, again, you've protected the medial femoral condyle with that microfracture all. So at this point, we're, we're well positioned and we can d ream our femoral tunnel. So one of the other benefits drilling the tibia first is it allows taking the bullet out while you ream allows the bone and soft tissue debris to extravasate from the tibial tunnel so you don't leave a lot of bone debris in the knee for which impedes visualization. So again, we're going to ream roughly at 24. So our, my bone plug is approximately 18 to 20 millimeters. This system has a beautiful oblong hole, but a pearl when doing this is you don't ream line to line. It's ream roughly four millimeters past what the length of your tunnel is. So my bone plug's about a 20. I'm going to ream roughly a 24, which will put the posterior aspect of the bone plug exactly where I want it. So we're about 24 there. And that's right where we want to be. Then you come out on high speed, which cleans the reamings from the femoral tunnel. We have a suction device. Uh, this can go up the tunnel if necessary, just to clean some of the debris out of the tunnel. A yank arrow tip can be fed over this wire, which is another benefit of the system, which allows us to go straight up the tunnel. Again, we see our nice two millimeter back wall. And if you look at the oblong hole, 
you can see that it comes out nicely anteriorly and produces appropriate anatomic trajectory of the ACL. So at this point, our stitch can now be passed. So this wire functions as a passing wire, which allows to pass our passing stitch out the lateral thigh. And then that passes easily through the femoral tunnel. Our passing stitch is there, and we already have our tibial. So you can take your suture retriever up the tibial tunnel. It's already prepared, and we can pull it out. And that's grasped on the lateral thigh so that it doesn't come out. So at this point, all of our tunnels are drilled, our socket is drilled, and we're ready for graft passage. So with the patellar tendon prepared, it's a triangular patellar tendon graft off the patella side and a rectangular or round off the tibial side. I do use my patellar bone plug and put that in the femur. It allows me to take less bone. You pass the stitch around, passing stitches go out easily out the lateral thigh. Again, the tibial tunnel's already drilled, so this is effectively done. So the position of these holes within the patellar tendon. One is on the vertical aspect, the, the apex of the triangle. The other is on the far side. Again, what, what's being discussed here is the minimizing the risk of suture cutting during screw and tapping placement. And so the sutures are placed on the far side of where the tap and the screw is going to be placed, which is right along where I've marked here. Again, minimizing the risk of any sort of screw or, or suture cutting. Once this is done, the graft is then deployed, introduced in the femoral socket. It's nicely seated, and you can see the base of the, the screw there. So this guide wire introducer is also a notch and interference dilator. Uh, it does it all in one single technique, introduced through the antral medial portal. It allows placement, as seen here, through the antral medial portal. Okay, so there we can see our bone plug. So this can be positioned at the antral superior aspect of the notch. Excellent, okay. Uh, and that maintains its position. The wire can then be introduced through this nice handle, which positions the wire in, in the exact position where it has been malleted. So this can be advanced. I, I gently advance it by hand till it seats, and it's secure at that point. The interference dilator is then removed, and that allows us our position for the tap. So this is a flexible tap that's designed for the biocomposite interference bone patellar tendon bone screw. This has a flexible system with partial rigidity. So it is a nice combination between the ability to get around the medial femoral condyle with this, in this position, but at the same time, changing to the appropriate trajectory of the tunnel up the lateral side. So both flexibility and rigidity, which improves the ability of the surgeon to both put the screw in and minimize chondral damage. This can be introduced over the flexible wire that was previously placed in a cannulated fashion. So the tap is nicely flexible, which again allows us, we'll show this again, to go around the femoral condyle and then rotate to change its trajectory, which allows us to tap in the normal trajectory up the tunnel, which is exactly the same trajectory that was utilized with the flexible reaming system. One nice thing about this, uh, and it's useful, is to tap a bit beyond. Again, we remember we reamed a 24, so we're going to tap to a 24, even though our bone plug is about approximately a 20. And it has to do with the oblong trajectory of that tunnel, which benefits the orientation of the ACL. Under tapping can produce issues, and therefore we do our very best to make sure that if anything, we over tap. Once that's done, the biocomposite screw can be introduced. Our bone plug in this position on the femoral side, we drilled a 10, the bone plug is a 10. We tapped a seven uh, and that is what we'll put in. Because of the close interference fit of the bone plug in the bone socket, a small screw is reasonable and provides more than adequate fixation. Again, this is introduced on a flexible introducer and a flexible screwdriver. This comes easily past the condyle with the pre-tapped hole. It finds its position very simply, goes in without any excess pressure whatsoever. That sound demonstrates adequate fixation. I'm twisting stiffly, but not any significant degree. That's placed in. It's then removed. The wire easily comes out without any stiffness whatsoever. One of the benefits of using the biocomposite screw with this reaming system is in a revision situation, this screw can be reamed over, it incorporates, it will absorb over time, but even in this setting, the unfortunate situation with an early re-tear in a traumatic situation, this screw acts as an interference screw that can again be incorporated in the revision, it can be reamed over, and does not require removal like a metallic screw would. In this fashion, the 
femoral fixation is completed. The ACL is demonstrated in the appropriate fashion. The knee is then taken in extension, demonstrating no evidence of impingement. It disappears appropriately behind the notch, demonstrating an adequate position of the tibial tunnel again. At this point, we'll then move forward uh, with our tibial fixation, again with a biocomposite fast thread screw. This can be done outside the joint at this point. The knee is then placed in approximately 10 to 15 degrees of flexion. We check our isometry of our bone plug in flexion extension to see our tensioning. Mildly anisometric, which is what is preferred. So at this point, given that, I will fix it approximately 10 degrees of flexion to avoid any sort of capture of the knee. We have a long, intentionally long bone plug, which allows us to have adequate tapping position and fixation of the screw. At this point, our bone plug is approximately five millimeters outside the tunnel. It's a 30 millimeter long bone plug, giving us 25 millimeters in the tunnel itself. This is intentionally long, which facilitates, and that's during the harvest, which facilitates positioning of our tap and our screw. The guide wire was placed in this position posteriorly. It can be placed anteriorly, depending on the surgeon preference. So we're going to tap on the area where we've marked because that mark so t tells me two things. One, there's no tendon there, and two, there are no sutures there. Again, over tapping is beneficial in this case. So we will tap, I'm gonna put in a nine by 20 millimeter screw. We tap to about a 25. Once that's done, the tap is removed. Notice the sutures are still intact. They have not been cut by the tap, which is a concern that some people have with both metal metallic screw and tapping position. Once that's done, the screw can be placed in its trajectory that's already delineated by the tap. It finds its position easily since the tap has already created this position. At this point, once the screw is partially inserted, the wire is removed and checked to make sure the tip is not incarcerated in the knee. The screwdriver is then fully seated again and final fixation is completed into the tunnel with the screw seated fully without any prominence. With a 20 millimeter screw, there's no concern with any screw penetration into the joint and it's completely seated at this position and final fixation is confirmed at this point with an adequate Lockman placed on the knee. Full extension is confirmed, full flexion is confirmed, and the remainder of the five millimeter graft is then amputated on the anteromedial tibia at this point and sutures can be removed easily as they are not captured by the screw. And that completes our demonstration of the bone patellar tendon bone with a flexible reamer system and the fast thread biocomposite screw.